class. I am Adewusi Michael Adelani, your facilitator on this course, Introduction to Cyber Security and Oversight of Information Security. Well, let's quickly look at the objective of what you, learners, is going to learn at the end of this course. Well, the title of our course, um, the title of our topic this second week, which is a lesson two of uh, uh, lesson two of week two, is basic network security. Let's look at the objectives. Objective at the end of this uh, training, at the end of this course, at the end of, end of this lecture. You should be able to define what is network security. Then you should be able to list types or methods of network security. Then understand the implementation of security platforms. Then to wrap it up, we are going to be relating all this to our immediate environment, also relating it to our tradition. Follow me as we go on. Now, as for the introduction, for the introduction, we will see that the concept, the concept of a network is not strange at all. It's not strange in this 21st century. Saying something, networking, networking, networking. That word, that concept is not a new thing in this uh, 21st century. The term networking refers to communicating either with or without a group. You know, when you say you network, that is, you, you mingle, you know, as the word of the young one, you mingle, you interact. You incorporate, you know, the network. Let me go there to go and network. We are all used to that way. Then also we say a network of intelligence. You know, when you talk about the social media platforms, you know, intelligence that has to do with among your close friends. And when you are saying about the social media platforms, you're talking about Facebook, you know, you network through Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, FaceTime, all of them. You know, you, 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 you network, you interact with other things. Well, this word networking, networking, networking is not only known in the human kingdom. It is also there in the animal kingdom. Not only in the animal kingdom, it's also there in the plant kingdom. And also even some very, very, very microorganisms, they also do networking. Wow, interesting. Now, let's take one for instance. Let's take for instance the hands. You know, we all know the hands. The hands in the house, you go to the field, you see ants. These ants, each worker has a very simple behavior. If you look at a lot of ants, colony of ants, you see them many. Each of them has a very simple behavior. You see, as each of the ants is moving, is going, the behavior is it leaves a trail of where it goes. Anywhere it's going, it tries to say, I'm going to the north, I'm going to the northwest. It leaves a trail of where it's going. Then back in the opposite direction, once it finds food, it follows back the trail. Then carry some of the food at the back, making the trail of almost as twice as strong. Now, imagine 100 ants are going on the same route. They leave a trail. They leave a mark that each of them produces. And 
as they produce them, it forms a vertical truth as they go along. Now, this is a typical example of networking. You know, each of them were able to connect to one another straight. This is actually the basic, the fundamental of networking in computing. Everything was taken from the concept of hands, living trails of wherever they goes to. Now, we've been talking about networking. What is now network system? As you could see in the, this diagram, you see everything is connected together. The internet, you can see the, the medical plan, the home, the hospital, the web, the land, the cable, all are connected together. Now, what is network system? We say network system operates in environment involving different interconnected parties. As you can see, this party, this party, this party is distinct from this party. You can see all of them have their own agenda. The agenda the what the home is having is different from what the medical plan is having. It's different from what the email server is having, the web, what is having, the laptop, what is having. They have their own goal, their own agenda, which may not match with the goal of others of the system as a whole. Well, for example, in this laptop, what was only be there might just be Microsoft Word, I have my files in, no video, nothing. But once it's been connected to the internet, this internet have its own agenda where I can have access to video, to audio, audio files, different type of files. The agenda of this internet is different from the agenda of this my laptop. But what? They operate in a environment involving different interconnected. That is, all of them are connected together of different agenda. That is a network system. The question that should be asked here is, is the system in the network secured? I connecting to the internet that has a different agenda from my own agenda. Is my laptop and the networks and the, the internet, is it secured? This is the big question. Now, what are the methods of network security? What are the methods of network security? One of the methods is authentication. One of them is what? Authentication is the process of identifying an individual and is distinct from authorization. As you could see, this individual goes through his phone, typing some things on his phone, and the system accept the individual. There are three types of authentication process. You just have to do with somebody going to a particular place, putting some forms of identity. And there are three types of them. As you can see here, you have the password, you have the smart card, you have the fingerprint or other biometrics. Let me take it one after the other. The password. To log in to your, to your email, you need your password. To open your Yahoo mail, you need your password. There are some houses now that are being equipped with smart card or some hotels. Before you could log in, you need to present a card into it, which gives you authentication that this particular person is the authentic person to come into this house. This particular person uses his uh, password 
is authentic to view the bills. Then also we have the fingerprints. The fingerprints, you must have seen some ATM machines that now requires your fingerprint as a form of identity, as a form of authentication. You know, we'll be talking about the multi-factor, the two-factor. It's about using additional types of authentication to increase the difficulty for someone malicious to steal the information. There are some processes, even your Yahoo mail, it will require you to log in with your password, with a password, and after the password, it sends you a code on your phone that you should authenticate it again to be sure if it is you. That is one method of security of a, a network security. Another Another is inscription. Another is what? Inscription. As you can see from here, you can see the first key and you can see the second key. Let's quickly talk about that. Inscription. This means to scramble data in such a way that only someone with the security code or key can read it. For inscription that grows things, a key specifies the transformation of plain text into cipher text and vice versa for description algorithm. Now let me tell you basically how it works. It's a very simple logic. Take for example, I want to I, I want to write a day to someone. And instead of me writing a day, I just change it with one, four, five. What is that? That is, I've already scrambled the word a day. So the other person at the other hand could easily descript it and understand what it is. But if that particular information falls into the hands of someone, you might not make meaning out of it because you don't have the secret. My other guy at the other hand will know the secret. We know ah, once he sees one, one is A, once he sees four, four is D, once he sees E, E is five. Once he sees one, four, five, we understood it to be what? A D. For example, or maybe you write something like come to me. You can script it into uh, figures and it's only the person at the other hand that will be able to understand. But somebody just see figure, 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 will not make any meaning out of it. That's just a simple way of inscription. Now you have all these complex ways of inscription where the original message with a very light data number. This is inscripted. This is done using advanced mathematics. This is done using advanced mathematics. Commercial level inscription uses 128 bit key that is very, very hard to describe. Very, very hard to, to crack. The computer received the information. It knows the digital key. So it's able to work out the original message. Just with the simple examples at, uh, or simple analogy at, at given. What about other methods of a network uh, security? Another method is firewall. Not fire in the wall, but firewall. Firewall. This is a network security system. It could either be hardware or software based. What it does is it controls the incoming and outgoing traffic based on a set of rules. As you can see in this information, there are some informations that are coming in. Then you have the firewall here. The firewall screens what is coming in. Then it gives access to those that 
he wants to give access to based on rules that have been specified. Rules like, I don't want anything like kill to come into my network. I don't want anything like bomb to come into my network. And once information is coming with bomb, with kill, they are screened out. As you can see here, all these ones in red are screened out. Where all the ones in, in green are allowed into my network. It's a simple method of network security. Now, who uses it? Members of the public, corporate organizations, they use it. What system uses it? It could be used on Microsoft Word, I mean Microsoft uh, Windows system, Windows systems. It could also be used in Mac. Then network devices, firewall could be used. Now, There's another one that will call MAC address filter. MAC address filter. Which is the word MAC, MAC, means media access control. Address filtering is a process of setting up parameters to allow only certain MAC addresses into a network or into a particular router. The way it works is simple. I have my router here. This is my router, excuse me. This is my router connected to the internet. Now, all these other systems, this is my network. This my router gives access to as many systems that is having the MAC addresses here. That's why at times you go into big uh, organizations and when you switch on your, uh, your wireless, you will discover that you could see uh, so many free Wi Fi. You plug in, pa pa pa. Once you plug in, You'll be expected to be connected to the internet, and at the end of the day, you will not be able to see internet. But you would might be in the network, but you are not actually in the network of those that have access to internet connection. Why? Because your MAC address had not been taken in by the router. It's as simple as that. What is it used for? This is to use to allow only certain MAC addresses to connect to a particular network. The network of those systems that are connected to the internet, you don't have access into them. That's how uh, the MAC address filter works. Now, we are going into something. Uh, we are to something that has to do with indigenous knowledge. We are going to case studies. Case studies now. Now, the first one we'll be looking at is case study number one is Aruku, the Yoruba way. We are looking at the indigenous cultural knowledge that are related to the concept of basic network security. We are also going to be Using looking at the contextual of basic network security. The first one we are going to be looking at is a case study of Aruku. Is something sent through someone's child or personal slave to prevent one party from denying sending the message? Remember, we talked about the network. In this article, a network had been made. And that network is, there is a communication that wants to go on among parties. There is a network now. I um, want to deliver a message to a particular person. I'm now using my child, or in those days, I'm using a personal slave. 
to send information to that person. The information must be non-repudiate. Repudiate. Sorry, excuse me. That is what we call non-repudiation. And when we talk about non-repudiation, it means an information is undeniable. The other party cannot deny the information I'm sending. The context or the context or form that Aruko will take depend on the intent of the sender as well as his relationship with the sender. I'll be sorry, excuse me, with the receiver. The receiver, on the other hand, should not be able to deny because he knows that that person that comes is what is my child. Or is his own child that he cannot deny of that that information actually comes from that person. Yoruba has always choose the right person to deliver the message, even if it means the messenger's death, so as to maintain his confidentiality. When we talk about confidentiality here is to stop intruder from understanding the message. Even if he or she gets intercepts, he or she gets intercept the message. He or she intercept the message. You know, remember we talked about authentication. Remember, all these are now coming into play. And we talk about integrity here to make sure that the receiver or modify the message. Your child is being called upon to deliver a message to you. There is an element of not denying the fact. There is an element of confidentiality. Another person looking at the child going, I just say, oh, the child is just going. Then there is an element of integrity that you cannot modify the message. And there is an element of authenticity to make sure that the message you received is indeed the message sent. It's indeed the message that the individual received the message. These are just the basic forms of Aruko. Now let me give us an example. There are different types of groups of Aruko in Yoruba land, in Yoruba tradition. You know, when a king sent a calabash, and gives it to the head of a family and writes the name of a particular person on that calabash. What it means is, I want the head of that person written in that calabash. I want his or her head on that calabash. And it must be delivered to the other. That is a form of arrow. You know, the calabash is the messenger. The person that delivers it to be a personal slave of the king or the son of the sender and you cannot deny the fact that you did receive it and you must carry out what the Oba had said. Let's look at another example. At another example. Case study two. The immigration of other guards. You know, security screening done by immigration officers and custom at the borders or even police checkpoints can detect people that are lying about their intentions. You know, you are going, you come in from the international airport, immigration people will stop you. What is your mission? What are you trying to do? Bring your passport, this and that. They try to check you. There are some firewalls which have been there. Then as you go through the firewall, they must step through your passport. Are you the authentic owner of this passport? All these are processes. All these are related to network security. The third case study is the entrance to the university community. Every individual and vehicles coming into the institution is screened at the gate whereby everyone's intention is made known at the gate. 
For example, in last week, they will ask you, Good afternoon, sir. You will answer, Yes, sir. Excuse me, where are you trying to go? You tell them you are going to Faculty of Education. They might give you a blue, uh, a blue plastic card to move it. That's your pass. That's your password. That's your authentication. Because when you are coming back and you don't have that pass, you won't be allowed out. It means you must have passed through the back gate into the school and steal someone's vehicle. So that's just what it means. All these are security measures put in place to checkmate malicious person. Like the authentication is there to checkmate. If you have no business there, you can't go there. Like the firewall is placed there, everything that has to do with so, 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 and so must be screened out. And in summary, all what we've been discussing, we've defined what is network security. We've uh, talked about types or method of network security. And we've also understand how to implement, how to put in place all this uh, security platform. And at this junction, I would like to say a very big thank you for listening to this lecture. And please, if you can't understand, watch it again, read the lesson notes, and may God bless you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Bye for now.